Hey Daniel, what do you do? What do what, hey, uh, hey, what do I do with all my old books? Welcome to experiment number four in the wall series. If you missed any of the first three, go back and check them out when you get a chance. Uh, but today's project, you know what I'm gonna say, really excited about it, although I really mean it. This one I feel like could fit in any space and with almost any style. But let's cut to the chase. We're doing a built-in bookshelf. Hmm. Rather ambitious. Don't go clicking away just yet, because I know what you're thinking. Crazy expert level requires craftsman skills, and there's certainly some out there that would require that. But I think I've got a pretty simple design that really anybody could do with a couple of simple tools. Do you want to hear it? I hope you do, because I made this whole video for you. So here's the plan in a nutshell. We're going to create a frame around the edges. We're going to install these columns. We're going to install shelf pins to set all the shelves on. Then we'll add a facing on the front of the columns to polish it up. I've got a little surprise at the end to put it over the top, but I'm not going to tell you that yet. So for the material, I'm going to be using these three quarter inch pine planks for almost everything. Uh, it's pretty nice wood, pretty smooth and straight and strong, uh, but it's not very expensive. We're going to paint this thing. I think it's going to work perfect. All right, let's get to work on that frame. Oh. Always, always run power to your saws. The frame is the foundation of the whole bookshelf, so you want to make sure you're hitting as many studs as possible. And to help us do that, I'm going to introduce to you the real hero of this project. This little Craig jig. This is the R3 model. It's plenty powerful to do this whole bookshelf. If you've never used one before, a pocket hole jig creates a really strong joint between two pieces of material while hiding the fasteners. The ability to attach at a 90 degree angle just gives you so much more flexibility. Seriously, you'll wonder how you even survived without this tool. Oh, and don't worry about the holes. A lot of them won't be visible, but the ones that are will be able to fill with caulk or put wood plugs in and sand them smooth. All right, so we got our nice sturdy frame in place. Now we're gonna install the columns. More pocket holes. The key here is getting your columns evenly spaced and perfectly level. All right, columns are in place. Time to drill out the shelf pins to hold the shelves. We're getting close. So I measured out where all the shelves are gonna go by hand, uh, but you can get a shelf pin template to make that step a little easier. But basically you're gonna be drilling out quarter inch holes for these little shelf pins to fit in. And the shelves will just rest on those. Shelf cutting time. Always wear glasses. So ideally all your shelves would be the same exact width, but not all walls are perfectly square. You want your shelves to be pretty snug, so just double check all your measurements before you make the cuts. Looking good, bro. Hey, while he's working on this, I wanted to tell you, make sure you stick around to the end of the video, because I'm going to have you guys vote on the next design. And hey, go ahead and hit that like button if you don't mind. Guys, I'm kind of trying to... Sorry. Alright, so I finished dry fitting all the shelves in place. Everything fits, which is great. Next step is to install this 1x2 material uh, on all four columns. Not only will this help keep the shelves in place, uh, but it'll cover all the joints and help give the bookshelf a really unified look. Almost ready to put paint on this thing and call it a day. But first, do you remember that surprise project I mentioned? Check it out. What's a bookshelf without some good accent lighting, right? I'm using these inexpensive plug-in lights, so it's really not that complicated. I start by making a six inch header board and installing it across the top of the shelves. Find the center of each shelf and mark it on the header. Then install the hanging hardware. Drill out a one inch hole behind each light for the cord to run through. And then drill out another one inch hole in each of the columns for the cords to run through and unify uh, on an extension cord. Then I made a dog ear cut on each of the shelves that I'd have my extension cord running up. So it'll hide behind there. It all depends on where your outlet is though. This is where I got to sneak in a really cool feature which was this little touch activated on and off switch. Once I got all the wiring worked out, I finished by spray painting each light with this antique brass spray paint. 
Which brings me to our paint color, which is this dark green called Tea Shot. I think it's gonna be really rich and beautiful. You ready to get painting? Okay, we're at the finish line. All that stands between you and a beautiful bookshelf is... Removing the shelves, removing the pins, taping the edges, caulking the holes, removing the lights, cutting in the edges, rolling the shelves, painting the columns, rolling the shelves again, and painting the drywall. But all I really want to know is... Are you ready? Oh, hold on, I'm not ready. Sorry. Okay. Okay, now I'm ready. It's beautiful. I like it. And now you have so much more storage. The thing I like best about this one is that it adds such a custom look and it really looks complicated. Uh, but when you break it down, it's just a couple of simple steps. I also really love the lighting system. I think our little spray painted sconces turned out great. And I love the little touch pad to turn it on and off. As always, I'm curious to hear what you guys think of this one. Would you try it? And as I mentioned earlier, the next project is up to you guys. So let me know which of these four designs you want to see me tackle next. The first one is this 3D cube illusion. Uh, that'd be really fun to make out of like stained wood. The second one is this string art wall. You may have seen it on a small art piece, but I think it'd be cool to test doing this as a full wall. The third one is just trying some cool stacked trim pattern, just really classic. And the fourth one is this natural wood slice wall. I even thought doing some paint or colored stain on top of some of them would be really cool. Leave a comment below to vote on which design you want me to do next. Alright, thanks for watching. Have a wonderful day.